Welcome, it's Saturday the 15th of February. Now, ever since the start of this infection, the uh, COVID-19, I've been worried about the effects the virus might have on children. So I've got a couple of papers that, uh, that shed some light on that in this video and, and probably the next one. But just before that, I want to look at some news that's caught my attention. Now, I was delighted to see that the World Health Org Organization has announced that the Chinese in country have set up 82 clinical trials. Excellent news. And these clinical trials will test the efficacy of a wide variety of drugs from existing known antiviral drugs all the way through to Chinese uh, medicine because the Chinese have a long history of, of herbal medicine, some of which can be effective. And they should be reporting in two to three weeks. As far as I know, these are double-blind, randomised controlled trials of the highest order. So we'll have a group of patients that are given an active drug, a group of patients that are given a placebo to compare the two, the experimental group and the control group. And that will give quantitative data as to the efficacy of the drug. So good news, and we should know that in a few weeks. Let's hope they come up with a nice, cheap candidate. Preferably some nice generic thing that's really cheap we can bash out by the ton to treat this infection. But we will know that in two to three weeks' time. Now, I have concerned, uh, expressed concern quite a few times on these videos about um, the virus taking hold in poorer areas of the world, such as some African countries. And we do have a first confirmed case in Egypt. No other confirmed cases in the rest of Africa. Let's hope that's true. And it's just that they haven't been diagnosed. But I did get an email, as I told you yesterday, from an African doctor who had no test kits. He wanted to test, but he had no test kits. I learnt just recently that five million people left Wuhan before it locked down. Locked down just before the Chinese New Year. So all these five million were people that presumably were working in Wuhan, big industrial city leaving to go home for the Chinese New Year. Some, for some of them, their only annual holiday, and uh, unfortunately this time they would take more home with them than uh, New Year presents, potentially. Just shows you the huge scale that we're talking about. Now this cruise ship, the Diamond Princess, is a bit of a bizarre story. 3,711 people on board. Last 24 hours, 67 more positive Cases bringing the total confirmed of uh, COVID-19 cases or testing positive for the virus up to 285, which is 7.7% of the total amount, according to my calculations. Now, I must say, if I was on that ship, I wouldn't be very happy about sitting around just waiting to see if I got infected. Um, now, the question is, of course, were all these people infected before the start of the quarantine period? Or were they infected during the quarantine period? I have no data to answer that question. But it hangs as an open question. The, 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 the boss of the World Health Organization yesterday was, it was, uh, it was kind of, it was the day before? It, anyway, he it was, it was in full flight giving this sort of, you know, it was a good speech actually, a bit, a bit emotional speech, but, but it was good. And, and, and he, he, was, he was comparing the difference between different viruses. I think it was between Ebola and uh, the COVID-19. And he said the COVID-19 COVID virus is airborne. And uh, the doctor who was sitting next to him, his mate next to him, wrote him a note and passed it to him. And he read that note. <laughs> and, then, and then at the end of the talk, he said, when I said airborne, I didn't mean in the military sense. Like airborne paratroops or something. He said, I meant in the sense of droplet infection. So I'm glad he clarified that. Uh, make of that what you uh, what you will. So we move on to the interesting case of the Thai taxi driver. This was published in the New English Journal of Medicine on the 12th of February. Journey of a Thai taxi driver and novel coronavirus. Now we know about person-to-person -person spread. There's been 425 cases in Wuhan documented. We know there's thousands more. But this local taxi driver in Thailand was infected with SARS coronavirus type 2. Now, 
I don't particularly like this term, but the coronavirus type 2 is the one that causes the COVID-19. Coronavirus disease 19. The, the disease that's causing the problem. So this is the virus, this is the disease. Now the story here is on the 20th of January, a 51 year old male taxi driver had a fever, cough and uh, myalgia. So that's the 20th of January. So this is the red, the red line here is his illness. So on the 20th of January, he had this uh, typical um, fever, cough and achy muscles, myalgia. We're not cold, told if the cough was dry, but we assume that it was. 23rd of January, <clears throat> so he just must have soldiered on for a few days there. 23rd of January, he went to a primary care clinic in Bangkok. Temperature was 36.8, which is normal. And a throat swab for influenza A and B were both negative. So that's good, the testing for known viruses. And there, there weren't any. So they sent him away and he went home. But the 24th to the 27th of January, a purple line there, 24th to the 27th, he was at home during that time. And this is, this is what's interesting about this case, as we'll see. So he was at home then, too ill to work. Home from the 24th to the 27th. Now on the 28th, he still wasn't feeling well, so he went to a general hospital in Bangkok and was put under investigation for COVID-19 and he was isolated at that stage. And he was positive. He was positive for the, uh, the SARS coronavirus type 2, causing the COVID-19 infection. 28th of January, he had fever and mild dyspnea. Now that dyspnea is difficulty breathing. It's the American spelling, <laughs> difficulty breathing. Now, chest radio, chest, chest x-ray, chest radiograph showed a reticular patchy infiltration. Right, um, what this means is, so if you imagine there is a main airways there, going to his lungs, so left lung, right lung, like that. So he had did he have patchy uh, reticular patchy infiltration reticular means a network infiltration means that there's consolidation in the alveoli it was in the bottom of his left lung so it was kind of this area here and it was like a network of they're not saying he had pneumonia but it's pneumonia like features so in these areas where he had this uh, reticular patchy infiltration um, what would happen, what happens is, if these are the alveolar air sacs, then fluid is accumulating in these. That's the, that's the infiltrate, the fluid, and of course that stops the air getting in and out properly. So that's what, that's what that means. Now, throat and nasopharyngeal swabs tested positive for the, uh, for the COVID-19 virus. And it's nice that this was done at two laboratories. So two different labs came up with the same result, which is it's quite reassuring. Now, when he came in, he said he had no co comorbidities. He thought he was fit and well. Unbeknown to him, he had hypertension, which of course is a hidden epidemic, <laughs> and type 2 diabetes, which is another hidden epidemic. So he was found to have both of these conditions. And this could be relevant because people with hypertension it's been reported that they get more severe disease and people with undiagnosed type 2 diabetes mellitus their blood sugar levels will be higher than normal and if the blood sugar levels are higher than normal this interferes with the ability of the white cells to move through the tissue spaces therefore the white cells are less able to combat infection than they normally would be so both of those could be relevant now, he reported contact with a Chinese passenger in his taxi who had frequent coughing, but who, who wore masks. So the Chinese passenger was wearing uh, masks. And the driver himself had no history of travel to China. So the assumption is the Chinese passenger that I believe he was taking back to the airport uh, ha had the infection, had COVID-19. Um, but where had he been? He was taking him from Bangkok. 
uh, unclear what he'd been doing in Bangkok, certainly from this paper. Now, the 5th of February, he was discharged after being in a clinical stable condition. So he was off work uh, from the 24th and then um, stable and discharged on the 5th, on the 5th of February. That's the timeline. But the key thing here was home for this uh, four day period at home when he was infected. He was symptomatic. And his wife, son and nephew, who he lived with, were in the house with him for those four days. Now, Thai taxi drivers don't earn a fortune. They, they live in probably very basic, uh, relatively small accommodation by our standards. I'm sure this guy wasn't living in a spacious mansion. But his wife, son and nephew, who would be in fairly close contact, were asymptomatic. They had no symptoms and they tested negative on real-time preliminaries chain reaction assay, which is the test. Assay just means an assessment of. And the throat and nasopharyngeal swabs were obtained from another 10 close contacts who also tested negative. So, quite reassuring really, um, and particularly reassuring, the reason I'm doing it at this stage, it's an interesting case, but that the son and nephew who were children uh, didn't get the infection, which is, is good to know that the children didn't get it. He had quite a long course of illness though, so he would be incubating before the 20th, all the way through to the 5th, so that's 11, 5, 16 days. Quite a long, quite a long illness really, and I assume he felt a bit rough before this when he was incubating at the end stage. Um, and I, I assume he didn't feel too bouncy straight away afterwards either. So quite a long uh, illness really. But so reassuring that the son and the nephew uh, didn't get the infection. Very reassuring. Now we know children can and we're going to look at more examples of this. So there's a well-known example now. This one's reported from the BBC. A Chinese newborn diagnosed 30 hours after birth. Born on the 2nd of February in Wuhan, the baby's mother tested positive before the baby gave birth. Good weight, uh, baby born stable after birth, but 30 hours after birth diagnosed with the condition. Now, this gives three possible modalities of spread. The first possibility is that the unborn child got it through his mother's placenta transplacental transfer of infection. That's possible. The second possibility is he caught it at birth, probably contact with the baby's eyes with the mother's vagina, for example, because we know it's spread through mucous membranes. So that is quite possible. And the third possibility is that he just caught it from the mother as a result of a normal droplet infection, probably during breastfeeding. And we do know that uh, infected camels produce uh, infected milk with the Middle Eastern uh, respiratory syndrome virus. So it wouldn't be ludicrous that the virus could be excreted in the mother's breast milk or from the mother's droplet infection. Uh, so we don't know which one it was. But we do know overall there's a lower prevalence of positive tests in children. So it looks like very often children are less severely affected, uh, maybe get the disease less, hopefully, and, and uh, don't have complications as often as adults. We really hope this is the case. We don't know yet, but the data is starting to point in that direction. And the next study I'm going to share, well, in a minute I'm going to share a study that gives further indication that that might be the case. But just before that, um, unfortunately, it's not all good news because on previous videos, we have looked at this study from the Lancet of the 6th of February on pregnancies. Now, this was carried out in uh, the first SARS uh, epidemic and MERS patients as well are both known to cause complications during pregnancy. And the data here from the Lancet is from the SARS epidemic of 2002-2003. Uh, Twelve pregnant women in Hong Kong with SARS were recruited into the study in the 2002-2003 pandemic. 
Now, I know that the original SARS is not the same as the COVID-19, but they're both coronaviruses. So um, it's not inconceivable that they have similar pathogenic effects. Now, seven women were in the first trimester in 2002-03. Uh, five were in the second or third trimester. Try for three months of pregnancy, first three months. Now, this is what's concerning. Now, I know it's a small sample size. Um, I know it's only 12. But four out of the seven women in the first trimester had a miscarriage, which, of course, is completely disastrous, devastating. Loss of the, the unborn child, loss of the fetus, loss of the mother's expected baby, and everything that goes with that. And in the second and third trimester, two of the five women had fetal growth restrictions. The fetus didn't grow properly. And uh, four of the five women in the second trimester had preterm births, one spontaneous, three induced because of the mother's condition. And pregnancy does affect the immune system and 25% of the women died during pregnancy. I'm glad that SARS epidemic was brought under control. I really am. Um, the, the, the loss to unborn children around the world could have been appalling. And as of now, I have read nothing. And I have been looking. I've read nothing on um, the effects of the COVID-19 on... Uh, pregnancies or on the fetus. So the next study is going to look at uh, some uh, another cohort of children also recorded in the medical literature that were data gathered in China. That's the next one. <coughs>